Okay everyone, welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. What I'm going to go through with you now is just a couple of bits about what is an equilibrium, the two main features of an equilibrium other than Le Chatelier's principle of course, and how an equilibrium responds to changes in concentration. So first off is how do we actually establish the equilibrium? Well if we consider a normal reaction first of A going to B, some reactions just go in that forward direction and then never get reversed. However, others, if placed under closed conditions, so either a sealed container or everything dissolved in a solvent, then what can happen is, if you leave it for some time, these can take a long time, then what happens is a reverse reaction of B to A starts to take place. Now, this reaction will gradually pick up its rate. So you can see here I've used a smaller arrow to try and represent that. So it will gradually pick up its rate and then the A to B will start to slow down. And so what you establish in the end is a fully formed equilibria. These can take a long time though. Some esters, for instance, can take two weeks to establish and it's not something that is going to be particularly speedy. So don't think it's happening instantly. Don't think if you mix A and B in closed conditions, then you've all of a sudden got yourself in equilibrium. Now the two main features, I've already alluded to one of them, of an equilibrium, are that the rates of the forward A to B and the backwards B to A reactions are equal. And as a result of those rates being equal, the concentrations of A and B remain constant although the concentrations of A and B may or may not be the same as each other. They're actually much more likely to not be the same as each other. So whilst they may not be the same, they are kept at the same levels and therefore they're described as constant. So what else do we need to know about an equilibria? Well, according to Le Chatelier's principle, an equilibrium will resist any change placed upon it. And it does so by shifting. So what does a shift mean? Well, if I was to shift from the left to the right, then that means I'm going to decrease my amount of A and increase my amount of B. What I've actually done, shifting from the left to the right, is I have increased the rate of this reaction. So what Le Chatelier's principle says is an equilibrium can increase the rate of one of its two reactions to allow for an adjustment on the concentrations of either side, be it the reactants or the products. Just another point here as well, even though of course there is a reverse reaction taking place where B is the reactant here, we still describe them as reactants and products as we would for a normal reaction. The reverse of this would then obviously be true if I was to do a right to left shift. That means that the backwards reaction rate has increased. And so I'm going to lower my amount of B and increase my amount of A. So let's put a scenario together then. So if I had a scenario of C at equilibrium with D and E, then what would happen if I was to increase the amount of C? So let's say I increase the amount of C just here. Well, the equilibrium is going to shift, which remember, it means it's going to increase one of these rates. It's going to shift to oppose the change that I've just done. So if I've increased the concentration of C, the equilibrium is going to shift in a way that will decrease that. What we've just established up here is, in order to decrease the concentration of C, I need to react it. So I need the equilibrium to shift to the right hand side as that reacts C, and therefore the rate of the forwards reaction is going to be the one that's increasing. So to sum up, if I increase the concentration of C in the mixture, then the equilibrium, according to Le Chatelier's principle, will oppose the change shift to the right and lower the concentration of C. Final way of summing this up, if I was to lower the concentration of E, the equilibrium would respond to this lower E disturbance and it would shift to the direction which would produce more of it. So it's not just about using up extra that's been given, it's also about making more of what's being lost. And so here the equilibrium would shift to the right again, but for a different reason. This time it would be increasing the rate of the forwards reaction in order to restore the lost concentration of E. 
There's two other things that can affect the position of an equilibrium. These are temperature and pressure that you need to be aware of at AS level. One thing that is used to increase the rate of a chemical reaction but doesn't affect the position of an equilibrium is a catalyst. Now you've done catalyst operations in reaction rates and you know a catalyst will increase the rate of a chemical reaction. Now what that means is if you have two reactions with equal rates the catalyst will increase the rate of each of them by the same amount. So a catalyst will increase the rate at which an equilibria is established but it will not affect the position of that equilibria. So it helps you go through these stages perhaps a bit quicker but it doesn't actually cause for a shift to the left or the right hand side by itself. I'm going to do a separate video shortly about what affects the equilibrium should we change the temperature or should we change the pressure but for now happy revising and I hope you enjoy the rest of the AS videos.